Hey, welcome to Mesa RC. I'm Mr. Marshall, and I got the crew here, Road Warriors crew. Um, and uh, they've been working on this project now for about a whole semester. Yeah. Um, and really trying to nail down a solution for next year's class in terms of, of our build the drive. So the uh, Air Division's got a bunch of build the flies, but we have nothing for the ground kids. The champion was okay. Um, but we thought we could do better with the 3D printed stuff. And so this is what they were able to come up with. And um, Colton, you guys used um, a source from Thingiverse. Do you remember what that guy's name was? It was like Barspin64, I think. Yeah, from, yeah. this is like OpenRC. I think yeah, OpenRC. So OpenRC, he successfully made a 3D car, and we got, you know, after using some of his build, and to, to do the gearbox and, and some of the uh, other aspects of the car. A lot of respect goes to him for getting that thing to work. Yeah. Um, because uh, we have come through some, some big, big issues. Uh, but let's get into it. This is the shell, it makes it look pretty. Let's get down to what the kids created. So, um, Ali and Cece, you guys did the, the, um, the chassis, yes. right? And how'd that go? What? Well, yeah. yeah. Pretty easy or hard, or what was your challenges? Um, we well, made it too big at first, so we had to like scale it down, but I think it was pretty easy. Yeah, and um, the part I thought was easiest and kind of hard is like taking, um, well, originally we used it on our, ch we originally used the chassis, and we just made a few tweaks to it. Um, because I didn't want it to be exactly like the chassis, I kind of wanted to make it look smaller instead of having it make, like, have all the cars look exactly the same. I just right. made it kind of look thinner and a little smaller than it, the yeah. chassis. And so you guys pretty much had, you had to work around these two guys, because yeah. these guys were the 3D guys. Yeah. Um, so they're developing all this, um, the, both these uh, systems here. And then you guys had to come in and measure around um, them on yeah. all that part. Yeah, and you guys did a great job. So when they went to go pl plug in all this, uh, these mechs here, everything went in perfectly. So you guys did a really good job, I'm proud of you. So it's just uh, two laser cut pieces that they did here, and they're also designing some 3D pieces um, for, you know, for the tower, for the ESC. Um, they're also designing um, some skid plates underneath to protect it and to strengthen up the, the uh, chassis too. So I'm looking forward to that. Now what's cool about what they did was is now we have a blueprint for chassis, especially the ends. And what the problem that the boys had to do was create a setup that could all go together. And that whole setup can go together and put it on any type of chassis. Same thing back here. You build a setup that we can now put on any um, a chassis. We can essentially make this thing as long as a skateboard if we wanted to with both the sections on both ends. So, uh, no, you guys did a really, really good job communicating in terms of designing both aspects together. Um, and then you guys, um, Colton, this, how this whole front area, this front suspension, it seemed to work pretty good Yeah. in terms of what you guys were using it for. Um, talk, talk about how, you're, how you set up the servo and, and all that and how you're controlling it. All right, so we originally looked at the Rustler and the, their servo was off to the side and there's a whole section of just different bars and stuff that connect. And then we looked at um, a stampede, and it's just got a servo and two arms that kind of sit a little bit above it, and we kind of liked mm -hmm. that idea. It seemed a lot simpler. A lot simpler. I mean, we all know from building Champion, all that network yeah. of pull and play with the servo and the control horns, that was tough. Mm -hmm. And if you guys didn't have it right, oh man, you couldn't turn. Yeah. Yeah. This thing turns on a dime. Mm -hmm. um, just like the Stampede does um, with this setup here. I really like that. And you guys designed a pretty much a angled bracket here to mm -hmm. then have the standard piece for the um, suspension arms to come out to get locked up. And then they designed this to shock tower to hold their shocks in place. And those um, little sway bars. And those sway bars, everything. I mean, you guys got this part pretty much nailed down. Mm -hmm. If there was any changes on this part, what would you guys do? Um, maybe probably that. make it a little bit more simpler for less things to break. Okay. Um, because there's like a lot of edges and things with this. Okay. But we haven't come across any problems with this so far. Yeah, it's been awesome. Maybe even angling it up a little bit more, mm -hmm. increasing the angle, um, so that the you know we actually use the suspension a little bit better. Um, and then this is this is the uh, the problem child. 
And this is the year box. <laughs> Kudos to OpenRC for getting theirs to work, because that, tell, tell me what has happened with this gearbox. Uh, both of you guys, because you guys both had to, be, had to deal with this. All right, so it's got, I think there's four different gears in there that all connect, and then they come out on two rods, and we've made several different adjustments to it from his version. So his version was meant for a forward or a mm -hmm. four-wheel drive car, and we turned, flipped it around and used his box for a two-wheel drive car. So we've had to make several different changes for the and, um, cars and stuff. Uh, we were coming across problems with uh, gears to be shredding, so we adapted some Traxxas parts on to make it more robust, and um, it seemed to be working pretty well, except for the still 3D printed parts, yeah, the, the differentials. The differentials yeah. has, has been our nemesis, and um, we, it would get to work, and we would drive for like three minutes comfortably, and nothing would happen, and then all of a sudden, I'm just Yep. Yeah. So it's like, ah, oh, so what was the change you guys made to now finally get this thing to drive? Um, we just, in, with all the gears, we just epoxied them all together and <laughs> <laughs> made it a solid, technically a solid bar straight through. Yeah, solid yeah, axle. Solid axle. So, uh, you know, the whole idea was to get some, you know, independent suspension. We've got that. Um, but now we're not going to have that, that, you know, the help of the differentials um, where the, each tire can grab and independently, you know, turn. But, uh, so yeah, you guys just went in there and locked that thing up. Yeah. So now we got, we're back to what we did with the Champion. Maybe one day we'll, we'll adventure back to that. But um, 3D parts definitely, you know, cause some, some issues, yeah. you know. For all this stuff, it's pretty practical, but for gears... Man, I, it gets it gets pretty tough. We're gonna have to get really smart in terms of what the gears look like and all that. Um, we also found out that um, the brushed motors that come standard with any of the Rustlers or Traxxas, any that the uh, what was it the T Titan, Titan 12, 12 something. Yeah. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Traxxas, but that motor sucks. And when it comes to um, kids' designs, I'm sure you weren't meant meant to be you know put that into kids' designs, but yeah, it, it just sucked. So we decided to go with this system. Why don't you guys talk about this system? Uh, this is a Horizon brushless motor. And uh, we chose to go to brushless because it wouldn't heat up because some of our gears were melting yeah. with the old Traxxas brushed ones. Um, it also improved the speed test. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We just needed something that had a little bit more torque mm -hmm. and something that wasn't going to burn up just have no. to work as hard. Right. So we uh, went with a little bit of a bigger setup. Instead of burning through two or three motors, mm -hmm. we have this setup, which we're very pleased about. It took us uh, a couple of days to figure out how to program it. Yeah. Uh, but we finally got it, you know, working right. And um, no, I'm, I'm proud of you guys for where you come. The thing that I'm most proud of is that you guys didn't give up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's very easy to be like, oh, we can't figure anything out. We're done. And you just walk away from it and just hang out for the rest of the year. But you didn't, and you kept tackling it, and you kept fighting it, and you're going to make it easier, and you guys aren't going to see the benefits of it yourselves, but you're going to see future students have the benefits of easier models and easier transitions into this class with this type of design. So I'm proud of you guys. Next year's group will take a look at this setup and try to improve on it and try to work and see if they can make it better, and that's, that's kind of the whole point. Um, any last words before we go on driving this thing and put it to the test? Did you guys have fun at least? Yeah. yeah. You guys should be pretty proud. This is this is awesome. What, what are we naming it? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, 3D short course truck. 3D. I like how it's something like that. Okay, so MF short course truck. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's go on and drive it. Right.